Hi, welcome back to Blood Talks. We talked about routine testing such as blood type, antibody screens, and cross-match blood doubts in previous video. If you missed that, please check them out at the end of this video. In today's video, we will be talking about these tests, but for neonate patients. I will also include DAT, as is often performed as a part of neonate breakup. Without further ado, let's get into it. First, let's define the adult and neonate age group. Adult patients are not defined at 18 years and older, as most of us are familiar with in our day-to-day -day life if you live in the United States. In blood bank, the patient is treated as adult when the patient is 4 months and older. This is for transfusion purposes. Do you know why this is the case? It is because the patient does not or cannot make his or her own antibody before the age of 4 months. The patients may have transient antibodies from the mother, which should go away in a few months, since the patient immune system is not capable of producing his or her own antibody yet. In general, a combo test that is most performed in blood bank is called type and screen, which actually stands for blood type and antibody screen. The blood type part of the name refers to determining the patient's blood type A, B, O, or AB. And do not forget to determine the patient's RH status. It's part of the blood typing process. For adult patients, we perform both forward and reverse blood type. And the forward and reverse has to agree before we can assign a patient blood type. I have a video very detailed on how to perform these both forwards and reverse and how do we deal with discrepancy. So please check them out. What about neonate patients? For patients younger than 4 months, we do not perform the reverse type. Why is that? The patients cannot make his or her own antibody. Now, what about the ARCH testing for neonate patients? The test is done the same way as we would perform for the adult. This is because the ARCH test is testing the antigen that is on the patient's RBC. The ARCH antigen expressed at birth may not be the same string as adult, but we are able to detect them. We would take patients' RBC and D4 and D5 antisera reagents, mix them up, centrifuge, and read the agglutinations. If the patient is ARCH positive, then it's in here for the ARCH testing. If the initial test shows that the newborn patient is an ARCH negative patient, we would have to perform additional tests, which is a weekly test. This test is to make sure that the patient is an ARCH negative and not that the initial negative test was due to weak expressions of ARCH antigen. If you want to know the process on how to perform weak D, let me know. The next test that we would perform as a part of neonate workup would be the DAT test. DAT stands for Direct Anti-Goblin Test. For adult patients, again defined as 4 months and older, the DAT test is a totally separate order. But for neonate patients, this test is often ordered together as a part of neonate workup. If you would like to learn more about DAT, you know what to do. For neonate patients, we would perform DAT IgG only. This test will tell you if the baby RBC coded with antibody or not. A positive DAT IgG suggests that the patient's RBC has been coded with antibody. It could be any antibody, not necessarily ABO incompatibility. However, we often see this in a baby of a blood type O mother. The anti-A and anti-B in the mother cross the placenta and attack the unborn RBC, which cause the early destructions of the red blood cells. Since the newborn liver is still premature, the bilirubin could accumulate and lead to conditions called hyperbilirubinemia. The buildup of the bilirubins in the newborn can lead to life threatenings. High level of bilirubin can travel to baby brains and cause seizures and brain damage. But don't worry because we can treat the baby with a light bath. Beside ABO incompatibility, which is the most common cause of DAT positive in a newborn, other IgG antibody that the mother has can cause DAT positive as well. Even though I'm using ABO incompatibility as an example, the ABO incompatibility is rarely caused hemolytic disease of a newborn. 
Moving on to the cross match, when do we perform cross match for neonate patients? How do we cross match the patients who cannot make antibody yet? More importantly, why do we do it? I can promise you that the answer is not to waste your time or resources. Since the patients cannot make his or her own antibody, the cross match is only performed for neonate of a mother with antibodies. For neonate patients whose mother does not have antibodies, we would give ABO compatible blood products. For neonate patients whose mother does have antibodies, we would cross match antigen negative RBC unit with the mother sample. This way, the transfused blood will not lyse due to antigen antibody reactions. The transfused blood is missing the antigen that the antibody has specificity for. Now that you know the neonate blood type, the R status, the DAT status, and the method that you need to cross match for the neonate patients, the next step is to select the right products. What type of products do you select for neonate patients? Do we need any special products such as irradiations, CMV negative, or wash RBC products? If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. I have a video about it already. What do we give if the patient needs plasma products such as plasma, platelet, or cryoprecipitate? In my hospital, we give fresh frozen AB plasma arch positive or arch negative to neonate patients. We would consider giving patients plasma compatible blood products in case we don't have fresh frozen AB plasma available. However, we would need to confirm blood type before we can do so. For cryoprecipitate, we would also give AB blood type either Rh positive or Rh negative. For platelet, we would give freshest AB units or all low titer, and we would consider giving the patient plasma compatible blood type in case the AB platelet is not the freshest unit available. The Rh of the units would be either Rh negative or follow the patient Rh status. We would have to consider about the CMV and the irradiation need based on the hospital and the patient needs as well. We do not worry about these requirements for plasma and cryoprecipitate because they were previously frozen. What about RBCs? What do we give? We usually give group O negative RBCs, CPDA1, and less than 10 days old from the collection dates for neonate patients. You will have to check other requirements such as irradiations, CMV status, antigen negatives, or what cells. Let's discuss these requirements one by one. The O negative RBC is because it is easier to manage one blood type than stock up all the blood type because the neonate patients usually use a very small volume and sometimes we can't even share one unit for a couple of the newborns because they usually don't need a high volume. The reason that we give neonate patients CPDA1 is we try to avoid giving at cells unit to the baby because the additive is hard for the baby to process. The additive also binds to the calcium in the newborn body, which can deplete the calcium supplies and cause the baby to have cramps. The reasons for 10 days is that we try to give the freshest units as much as possible to the newborn patient so that there's less red blood cells lysis during storage, and we'll try to avoid excess potassium. We also want the RBC to have a long survival time in the patient's circulations, which could help decrease the number of transfusion that the patient needs. Blood, 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 hot, hot, fun time! Due to COVID-19, there's shortage of medical equipment like gloves, PPE, saline, etc. There's no difference when it's come to CPDA1 blood collection bag. The CPDA1 collection bag is in critical shortage. This become a big problem for neonate patients since CPDA1 is traditionally a product of choice. However, there are a few studies that show neonate patients can tolerate a small amount of blood product from at salt unit. If pools come to shelf, then you can use at salt unit. If large amount needed, you may need to wash the RBCs. However, Consult your manager, your medical director to get their approval before you do so. That is all I have for neonate transfusions. Did I miss anything? If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I don't know the answer, I will try my best to find out for you. Also, keep in mind that the information I put together here is the general practice at the moment.
As time changes, certain practice may change, and different institutions may have different policy. So please keep that in mind as well. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank, chemistry, or microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.